Hi guys, before we start this tutorial, just know that you can download the files we are going to use in this tutorial from this website. Visit courses.starttechacademy.com and if you scroll down, you will see this free resources section. Here you can get free data science related resources such as ebooks, course resources, cheat sheets, etc. You can copy this link from the video description below. Now let's start. Now before we start to learn about different chart types, let us first look at different elements that constitute a chart. Here we have a chart displaying graph of profit margin and income. Income is plotted as vertical columns and the profit margin is plotted as line with square markers. This income and profit margin data is called data series and the individual value of these data series such as this single bar or this particular marker are known as data points. So remember a data series is a combination of several data points. Now this horizontal axis is known as category axis or just horizontal axis and the label at the bottom, these months values written here are known as the horizontal axis labels. Now similar is the nomenclature for the vertical axis. But if you notice in this chart, we have two vertical axis. The one on the left is called primary vertical axis and one on the right is called the secondary vertical axis. We have created these two axes because there is a huge difference in the values of income and profit margins. While the values of income is in the thousands, the value of profit margin is in decimal points. If the profit margin were plotted using the left axis, the line for profit margin would not be even visible. It will be so close to the horizontal axis that we would not be able to even see it. Therefore, adding a separate secondary vertical axis solves this problem. Now we are able to add two different scales on a single graph. Again, the one on the left is known as primary vertical axis and its label is known as primary vertical axis labels. So these values of $240,000 $190,000 these are the primary vertical axis labels and this one on the right is known as secondary vertical axis and its label are known as secondary axis labels. You can also notice that we have this informative box on the right hand side displaying what these bars and lines represent. These two values are known as legends of the charts. So this blue bar is representing the income and these orange line with orange markers is giving us the profit margin. You can also notice that we have these numerical values on the top of the profit margin. These values are known as data labels. We also have this chart title on the top containing the value income and profit. This chart also contains horizontal grid lines. Grid lines are basically the extension of the vertical axis scales, which makes it easier for the viewer to determine the magnitude of the data points. So for example, if I want to find out the value of income for the month of April, I can see that it is lying slightly above this $140,000 grid line mark. So I can approximate it to be around $150,000. If you hover over the bar, it is giving us the value of $152,000. So it is a pretty good estimate for the value. In addition to this, all charts have a chart area, which is this entire background area of the chart. So this highlighted square, this outer boundary is containing the chart area. 
and then we have a plot area plot area shows the actual chart including the plotted data the axis and the axis labels so this small square inside the chart area is the plot area so that's all for the nomenclature of charts but why did we learn all of these we learned all of this because excel has independent formatting options for all of these elements and it will be really helpful to divide any formatting task into manageable individual segments and then we can format each of these individual elements separately i know remembering them must be a difficult task but everyone who is trying to master charts should know this nomenclature we will learn how to create charts with just one click you see creating charts is very easy but creating a chart that will convey the message is difficult so in this lecture we will learn about the easy part that is how to create a basic chart in the later part of the course we will learn how to create the amazing charts which convey the message so to create a chart just select your data and click on the recommended charts option in the insert menu here you can see the four options that excel is giving you you can select any suitable chart here we are selecting the bar type chart for our data so you can see that a bar chart representing our data is now plotted you can see that excel has automatically identified what goes where so it has automatically put sales as the chart title these jan feb march april these were the months have been given as the horizontal axis labels and vertical axis labels have been pre have been decided by the excel itself excel also provides some default design options and layout options if we go to the design tab we can change the structure of our chart there are few default layout options available you can hover over each of these to get a preview of what will happen in your chart area there are also color options available and some theme options available you can change the color of the chart using these options and from these styles we can change the style of our chart so if i hover over this black one you can see that it has a black background the bars are having green outline and they are transparent this next one has no grid lines and so on you can see the different styles that excel is providing to you so this is how we create a chart using a single click but in our course we will hardly use these default styles we will learn how to create our charts from scratch so that we have all the customized options at our disposal the amount of time that you will invest in choosing the right format right color and then the right style from all these options will be equivalent to creating a new chart from scratch we will be focusing on each chart type one by one and we'll be creating each of these chart types from scratch in this we will learn how to create column charts column charts are one of the most common types of charts a column chart displays each data point as a vertical column the height of which corresponds to the value the value scale is displayed on the vertical axis which is usually on the left side of the chart you can specify any number of data series and the corresponding data points for each series typically each data series is depicted in a single color so that you can identify different data series with different colors and patterns column charts are often used 
to compare discrete items and they can depict the differences between items in a series or items across multiple series there are different types of column charts the chart that you have you are seeing here is called a clustered column chart to look at all the different types of column charts available we will go to the insert menu and within this this is the symbol for column charts you can see all these are the options available in column charts this first one is the clustered column chart which is the standard column chart the second option is of stacked column chart in which the data series are stacked over one another the third type is the 100% stacked column chart where data series are stacked and are expressed as percentages in this second row you can see the 3d versions of column charts the first one is 3d clustered column which is the same as 2d clustered column but just in three dimensions second is 3d stacked column third is 3d 100% stacked column and the last one is 3d column in which multiple series are arranged along a third axis so now let us discuss about this particular example of clustered column chart in this column chart you can see monthly sales for two products shirts and pants from this chart it is clear that pant sales have always exceeded shirt sales in addition shirt sales have been declining over the months whereas pant sales are increasing so now let us learn how to create this clustered column chart let us first delete this chart that i have already created now the easy way is we will select the whole data we will go to the clustered column option in insert menu and we'll click it and you can see that we have a clustered column chart drawn for us the problem with drawing the chart like this is in case you want to add additional column in this table or you want to add more months in this table you will find difficulty in creating this chart again that is why we will be learning how to create this chart from a blank slate so we will delete this chart we will not select the data and then we will go to insert we will select a column chart this is blank nothing is drawn over here when you have selected this chart area you will get two additional options in the menu one is design and one is format first we will go to the design tab and there we will select this select data option this select data option can also be accessed by right clicking on this chart area and selecting select data option so now so now you can see there are two parts in this data selection dialog box the first part is of legend entries these this will be the data series that you want to plot so we will click on add button here we see two parts coming up one is series name so our first series is for shirts so we will select shirts here and the second box is for data series values so we will select all these values and you can see in the background the sales of shirts are plotted in the chart we can click okay so this is one data series which is the shirts data series which is plotted let us add the second data series this is the data series name then this is the data series values click on okay now you can see on the top the chart data range is getting updated on its own basis the data that you are selecting now on the right hand side there is horizontal axis labels 
by default excel selected 1 2 3 4 5 which you can see in the chart also instead of 1 2 3 4 5 we wanted the month names which is jan feb march april may so we will click on edit and we will select these five values and click on ok you can see that we are getting jan feb march april now as access labels we can click on ok and you can see that we have the two data series plotted in this stat column chart in case you want another column of sales of pair of shoes you can add that here and you can go to the select data table of select data option of this chart and you can add another series now in this chart there are two important information missing one is the chart title that is it is depicting the sales of our products so we will add a chart title and there is a box of legends missing which will tell us what this orange data series is depicting and what this blue data series is depicting so we will add the two elements of charts by clicking on this plus button and we'll tick this chart title box and the legend box now you can see the shirts data series is plotted in blue and the pants data series is plotted in orange we can change the text in the chart title by double clicking on it clearing it and entering the sales chart title that we want for this chart if you want to change the location of this legend box that is if you want it below your chart you can drag and drop it so this is how we make a clustered column chart if we want to make a stacked column chart it is very easy once we have created this chart we can just select this chart area by clicking anywhere on this chart area and then going to insert and then changing the chart type to stat column in this chart type the two data series one of pants and one of shirts is stacked one over another and you can see the total sales as one single bar so this chart has the added advantage of depicting the combined sales over time it shows the total sales have remained relatively steady over the years but the relative proportions of the two products have changed however the limitation of this chart is you can only compare this lower data series since it has a common base for this orange data series which is depicting pant sales you cannot really compare the change in its values because the base is constantly changing you get an idea that it is increasing over time but still it is not that clear Moreover, if you have more than two data series, it becomes even more complicated. Now let us go and change this chart type to 100% stacked column chart. Now you can see that the top is matched. That is, it is 100% for each month. So this chart is showing us the relative contribution of each product by the month. Notice that the value axis is displaying percentage values now and not sales amount so this chart provides no information about the actual sales volumes this type of chart is a good option when you want to compare the contribution of different categories to the total now you can also create three dimensional graphs using these options usually 3d graphs add no additional information they are just showing the same results in a 3D format. Some people use it because they find it visually appealing. But in most of the business settings, 3D graphs are not really preferred. People usually prefer 2D graphs. Although you can create 3D graphs if you want. This is the option to create 3D graphs. You can always create a 2D graph and then convert it to 3D. Another set of similar charts are known as bar charts you can see 
these are the bar chart options available these are exactly similar to column charts only difference is that the column or that this bar is rotated 90 degrees clockwise that is instead of vertical bars we'll be having horizontal bars one advantage of using a bar chart is that the category labels that is the horizontal axis labels which were in the column charts can be easily read in a bar chart so you can see if i have these months here if these values are longer it can be easily read in this bar chart instead if it was in column chart these values may overlap and it will be difficult to read you can see that these two values are getting congested and if you have even bigger labels it will get overlapped and difficult to read so all the options in column chart that we that we saw are also available in bar charts you can see this is the clustered bars this is the stacked bars and this is 100% stacked bars and these are the 3d versions of it so all those options that we saw in the column charts are also available in bar charts so in this video we learned how to create a column chart and a bar chart from a data table we also learned how to add the missing elements of chart we added chart title and chart legend using this plus icon in the right we will learn how to format this simple column chart the formatting concepts that we will be discussing in this video are universal for all the charts so even if we have not discussed any chart other than column charts the charts that we will be learning later on in this course like pie charts histograms etc you can do this same formatting in all those charts also as i told you this chart has several elements such as chart title horizontal axis vertical axis and we can format each individual element so to format one particular element we have to select that element so for example if i want to format the horizontal axis labels i can just click on double click on the horizontal axis labels and these will be selected if you want to format them you can right click on it and choose the option of format axis if you click on this you can see that we get a separate set of options on the right in this right window you can see in this drop down horizontal category axis is selected because i double clicked on horizontal axis and right clicked on it to open this format option so by default this window had this horizontal axis selected if you want you can select other chart elements also from this drop down window so let us select the first option which is chart area the next is three set of options first is fill and line which is background and border related formatting options the second is effects in this you can add three dimensional effects or shadows and button effects and the third option is size and properties you can change the size of this window that we have selected you can also change the size by dragging this corner points so you can change the height and width of this chart or you can change the values here to increase or decrease the height and width of this chart so this is how you adjust the size of the chart also now let's move to the first option which is fill in line and here we'll learn how to add border to this chart and how to add a background to this chart so you can see the first option is fill which is for the background and the second option down there is for border right now it is automatic for both first of all we'll add a solid line border to our chart when i click this the first thing i have to select is the color of the solid border that i want we'll have dark blue 
you can change the transparency of the border width of the border you can increase the width i'll increase the width for just so that you can notice it so you can see we have a border added to our chart you can also add a background using this fill option so if you click on solid fill you can fill a color in it you can see that whole chart area has a solid fill if you take on the gradient fill you can see it has two colors one on the top which is white and one on the bottom which is blue and the colors are changing in a gradient manner the third the fourth option is of picture or texture you can select a file from your system or you can select the pre-saved textures in your excel software so when i selected picture texture it applied a default texture you can choose other textures from these options if you want a background photo you can go and select that file if it is on your system second last option is pattern fill if you select it you can add pattern background to your chart area in business setting most of the times all these fancy options are not used however if you are in a creative business and you want to use some of these you may go ahead and change the background or the border of your chart now let us go to that drop down once again we have covered the chart area now let's go to chart title so again you can see that we have those three options with us you can add a background to this particular element so this small box will get a color or a background picture you can add a border to this small element so if you put a solid line this sales box will have a solid border if you want to change the font or the font size of this title you can select this text and go to the home menu and within it you can bold it or you can change the font from calibri body to some fancy font or you can increase or decrease the font size and using this option you can change the font color right now it is black you can change it to blue or some other color whichever you want the next option in this drop down is horizontal axis again you can add a background or a border to this using these options you can change the font font size or text color using those home menu options and you can notice that there is one fourth option here just click on it there are four options in this all these formatting options are particularly for horizontal axis only so if you want to shift the point where this vertical axis is intersecting with the horizontal axis you can do it using these options if you want to change the label distance you can also do that using these options but even these options are not really required in most of the business scenarios this fourth option is of legends this is the legend box this will give you the options of adding background and border these will give you the special effects if you want to add and this particular one which is particularly for legend it is asking you the legend position so right now bottom is selected if you want this legend to be on the right of this plot area you can select right so this comes on the right of this plot area if you want it to be on the left so you can change that top right and so on you can untick this if you want that your legends can overlap with the plot area apart from that just like any other element you can pick it and drop it you can drag and drop it to any particular position that you want the next option is plot area so you can see that plot area is this small box you can change the background of this small box if you want 
and you can add a separate border to it the next option is vertical axis again all the other formatting options are similar just the last one which is particularly for this vertical axis in this one of the most important things that we often use is this bounds option here you can see that on the vertical axis it is starting from zero and the highest value it is showing as a hundred thousand if you want to change these bounds that is you want the minimum value to start from say 30,000 and the maximum value to be 95,000 so you can see that this graph looks a little bit zoomed in because we have removed the bottom 30,000 part of this chart and only this top part which is showing the variation is now zoomed in Another important thing that we often use is this option of number. Since we have numbers here, we may want to change the way these numbers are displayed. So for example, if I have decimal values, I may want to show some decimal values here. So if I add two, you can see it has now two decimal values. Now this is being shown as numbers if you want this to be shown as a dollar value or a currency value you can select accordingly so for example if i select accounting you can see this dollar value is shown here since these are sales values this dollar here makes sense you can change the symbol which you want which is being shown here if you are working in some other currency you can change that currency and it will show that currency symbol So the next option here is vertical axis major grid lines. So you can see the vertical axis that we have here is giving us these horizontal grid lines. You can change these grid lines. You can have them as a dashed line. You can change the dash type. Currently it, it's a continuous line. If you select this dotted line, these it will be a dotted line. You can change the width of this line so that it becomes wider you can change the color of this line to black or to orange whichever you would like to see so this is how you can change the dash types so just in case you want to highlight your grid lines so that it is easier to read the data points you can change the formatting of grid lines from this option the next option is series shirts. So this is the blue data series. You can format this data series. You can change the color border of this data series. So right now it is blue. If you want it to be green, you can change the color. So the color formatting is similar to what we have already discussed. We will look at this third option, which is particularly for the series options. It is giving us three things to decide. One is plot series on which axis. I told you that you can have two axes. One is the primary vertical axis and one is the secondary vertical axis. The left side of the graph is usually the primary axis. Since both the data series are using the left side of the graph to show the values, it is primary axis. But if you select the secondary axis for this plot, so you can see the this green bar, this first January green bar, the sales value are not to be seen on the left axis, they are to be seen on the right axis. The problem with this is the bar, the sales bar of shirts is now overlapping the sales bar of pants. So we will bring them back to the primary axis. The second option is series overlap. Series overlap is basically giving us the distance between these two series. So for example, we have the data point of May. We have sales of shirts and pants in May. If I decrease the series overlap, the distance between these two bars will increase. If I increase it, 
they will start overlapping each other so after zero they will overlap each other you can see they are overlapping so series overlap is the distance between the two series the gap width is the gap between the consecutive values of the same series so for example this shirt series the distance between april value and the may value you can change using the gap width so if you decrease the gap width the april and may values of shirt series are coming together since it is getting thicker and if you increase the gap width they will shrink down so that the distance between these two values increases so basically use series overlap to increase the distance between two series data points different series data points and use gap width to increase or decrease the distance between consecutive data points of the same series or in a way change the width of the data series lastly as i told you you can add or remove elements of the chart by select by ticking or unticking the options here whenever you add another element so for example if i add the access title you can see that the that access title will come in this options you can select that and format it so whichever element you want to have you add it using this plus icon once you have added it you can format it by selecting it here these are all the formatting options that we usually use practice some of them out on your own we will learn about line charts line charts are often used to plot continuous data and are useful for identifying trends for example plotting daily sales as a line chart may enable you to identify sales fluctuations over time normally the category axis or the, or the horizontal axis for a line chart displays equal intervals in this example here for each year i have the contribution to sales of different products so this in this first line in the year 1953 the shirt sales were contributing to 43 per, 43.5% of the total sales and i have this data for next 48 years till 2000 so when i plot a line chart of these three products these three data series come as three different lines you can identify each data series with different color and the color is rep is representing which product is given in this legend box on the right on the x axis which is the horizontal axis you can see that i have equally spaced interval of time which is 2 years now let us learn how to plot this line chart i'll delete this chart we will select the old table and we'll go to insert menu and this is the icon for line chart you can see there are number of options here since excel can automatically identify x and y values we can use the recommended charts option which i told you is the one click method you can see here is the line chart for this table we'll click on okay and this line chart is created but we need to do a lot of things we need to change the chart title we need to give the y axis title and we can change the positioning of this legend box below if you are not sure that excel has selected the right data you can confirm by again going to the select data option you can click on this and you can see that in the legends you have shirts you can click on this edit button the series name is shirts which is correct and the series values are from c6 to c53 which is also correct so you can check for 
all other series also and if it is ok then you can use it. On the horizontal axis we should have years from 1953 to 2000. Excel automatically picked them correctly. In case it was not picked correctly you can click on this edit button and then select the years range. Let us click on ok. Now as told earlier you can change the chart title, horizontal axis title, you can format all these just in the same way we did for bar charts. Now let us look at the different types of line charts available. Let us click on this change chart type button. You can see we have all these options of line charts. The, this first one is selected which is a simple line chart. If you go to the next one it's a stacked line chart. So stacked line chart is similar to the stacked bar chart. The different data series will be stacked one on top of the other. So you can see first we have the shirts chart. On top of it we will have the pants values and on top of that we will have the others values. So this pant sales value is giving us the sum of pants plus shirts contribution. So for the year 1953 the pants contribution point will be at 97.4% which is sum of 43.5% plus 53.9% and the third line which is the others line will be the sum of all the three so it will be at 100% since contribution totals to 100%. So this is the stacked line next one is 100% stacked line since our total is 100% in this case these two will be exactly same. In case you have the total to be not 100%, this 100% stack line will convert all the totals to 100% and show the contribution of each product as a percentage of total. So as told earlier in bar charts also, it is used to compare the contribution of different products to the total. Next comes line with markers. Let us select this and click on OK. So you can see that for each data point, there is a circle mark on the graph. This is highlighting that data point. If you have fewer number of points, you can use this to highlight the data point which is constituting this line chart. Apart from that, it is exactly same to the simple line chart, just that it has the markers which are identifying the individual data points. The other types of chart types available. These other two types are the same things that we discussed earlier just that it will have markers with them. This last one is, an, is a 3D option of line which doesn't really make sense. You can click on it to see what it creates. It doesn't really make any sense. I'll use a different data set to show the change that a 3D line chart creates but even in that example you will see that a 3D line chart does not really make any sense when you are trying to convey a message using a chart. Now let us create that simple one only. I want to tell you one another point which is you can add since this one has no markers on it you can first of all add markers to it to highlight the data point and the second thing that you can add is the data labels if you want to highlight the value at each data point you can have data labels so if i go to data labels and hover over the above option you can see for each data point the value is noted since it has a lot of data points the chart is getting cluttered and it is not looking good at all. But if you have fewer data points and you want to highlight the exact value at each individual point, it is recommended that you use a data label so that at each data point you can actually view the value there. Now let us discuss the 3D line chart. I am showing you this just to make a point that 
it does not make any sense to draw a 3d line chart so here's the sample data of population in each of the three cities in different years if i make a line chart of this if i make a simple line chart you can easily see that this is the trend of population mostly it is increasing for the sydney and london city and for delhi in 2005 there is a sudden increase in population but if i create a 3d chart for this you can see that even with the grid lines we are not really sure what are the values of london and sydney in terms of population so instead of a graph it is looking more like an optical illusion that's why i never recommend to draw a 3d line chart in any scenario it is always preferable to draw a simple 2d line chart area charts are very similar to line charts the only thing is the area below the line has been colored you can look at this example that i have shown here in this data the first column is giving us the shirt sales in four quarters this right graph is the line chart of this these four values the left chart is the area graph you can see that area chart is same as line chart only thing is that the area below this line is colored in this chart now if i want to have multiple data series in an area chart so just like line chart will have multiple lines and area below all those lines will be colored and it will be difficult to interpret let us see how to do that i'll add a legend here name is pants and the series is these four values data series values another one others is the name and these four are the values we can edit the horizontal axis also okay okay so you can see now we have three series and this table is missing the legend box so i am first of all not able to identify which color is representing which series let's add a legend box for this so So you can see we have three series in this single chart and most of the blue series which is representing the shirt sales in the four quarters we are not able to see it because it is hidden behind the other two series if you want to look at the values of shirt series we need to increase the transparency of the pant series and the other series you know how to do it if you select any particular data series and go to format data series in the solid fill you can add transparency by increasing it here you can see that now you can look at the shirts data series now let us increase the transparency of others data series and also change its color so that it does not match with pants so so now you can see the three data series and you can also understand why it is very difficult to use this area graph since the data series are overlapping with each other one solution to this is using the stacked area chart so if you change the area 
चार टाइप द सेकेंड ऑप्शन इज द स्टैक एरिया चार्ट यू कैन सी इन दिस एग्जाम्पल हेयर सो दिस इज बेसिकली पुटिंग द डेटा सीरीज वैल्यूज वन ओवर अनदर सो इन क्वार्टर वन द शर्ट सेल्स वॉज नियरली अराउंड फोर सेवेंटी द नेक्स्ट ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड इज पुट फ्रॉम दिस फोर सेवेंटी वैल्यू एंड इट रीच इज अप टू नियरली सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड the third value which is for others which is 564 is stacked on top of it so now you can easily see all the three values and you can also see the contribution of each of the series to the total and just like bar charts and line charts the third option in this graph also is a 100% stacked area chart in which the total will be set to 100% and the contribution of each individual product will be shown as a percentage of total the other options in area chart is a 3d area 3d stacked area and 3d 100% area let us select a 3d area chart you can see that each of the data series is now a 3d wall altitude of this fall is the line which is representing the value at each data point you can see again this third data series is more or less hidden so although this chart may look visually appealing to a lot of people since data is often obscured behind the other data series this chart type is not recommended for business use most of the times we will learn what are pie charts and how to draw pie charts a pie chart is useful when you want to show relative proportions or contributions to a whole a pie chart can use only one data series pie charts are most effective with a small number of data points for example you must have seen such kind of pie chart showing the votes or seats won by different political parties during elections generally a pie chart should not use more than 5 or 6 data points that is slices a pie chart with too many data points can be very difficult to interpret in this simple example here i have the units sold of different products in this table and i am creating a pie chart showing the contribution of each of these products to the total so you can see the largest contribution is this orange slice which represents pants which has a value of 1082 it is very difficult to read this pie chart because it has missing data labels i do not know what is the contribution of each individual product to the total so i would like to add the data labels but before that let me tell you how to create this chart first i'll delete this select the table go to insert recommended charts and you can see that excel is itself recommending this pie chart if you do not find the pie chart option in the recommended charts option you can always go to the this symbol which is representing pie charts and you can select a pie chart there so i have this pie chart i want to add data labels i'll click on this plus button and add data labels so now you can see that it is by default coming at the center you have the option of changing the position of these data labels if you want it to come outside you can select outside end or if you want it as a data call out you can use that but these are still numerical values if you would like to see the percentage contribution of each product you can go to the data series formatting options and instead of value here 
you can put percentage so you can see 48 percent of the total sales was contributed by pants product if you want multiple data labels like if you want category name and value and percentage you can add all of those all these three information will be shown separated by commas if you want to highlight any particular product so for example i want to highlight that only eight percent of my sales is contributed by shirts you can select that particular slice by double clicking on it and dragging and dropping it somewhere else so this is called exploding the pie chart you can explode individual slices or more than one slices also this draws attention of the viewers towards this particular contributor to the slice now let us go to the pie chart options and let us look what are the different types of pie charts we can draw so the first one we have already drawn which is a simple pie chart the second one is a 3d pie it is exactly similar to the previous one just that it has a third dimension of giving the height to that pie which is really useless but still to make it more visually appealing you can probably choose a 3d pie chart then these next two options are pie of pie and the second one is bar of pie the pie of pie and bar of pie chart enables you to display a secondary chart that provides more detail for one of the pie slices for example if i have data like this the fourth contributor which was others if it has four separate subcategories if i create a single pie chart of all seven of these the pie chart will be very cluttered and i also want to emphasize that the last four are not a separate product for us we consider them as a single others product it has just four subcategories to it in that case what i can do is i can plot a first pie chart which will have four products shirts pants jeans and others and this others pie will be exploded into another pie and it will have four other slices so this secondary pie chart or the bar chart can clearly provide the additional breakdown of the others contributor so how to draw this let me delete this one first now select this table and select the pie of pie chart you can see that pie of pie chart is not in the recommended charts option so i'll go to all charts pie and i'll select the pie of pie chart you can see that instead of last four subcategories which were to be combined it has added only last three categories the others socks category is part of the main pie instead of being part of the secondary pie to correct this we will select the pie we will go to the data format data series options in this third option since we want the last four subcategories to be part of the secondary pie we can select this position option and tell it that the last four values in my table should belong to the secondary pie you can see this is a chart that we actually wanted there are other options of splitting this series also for example if you select value here you can tell it below which value you want to transfer the slices from primary chart to secondary chart so for example if i put 4000 here all the individual categories which have value less than 4000 will be part of secondary chart and which have more than 4000 value will be part of the primary chart so it is giving the same result similarly 
there is a percentage value which you can give again if i put 20% it creates a chart so probably nearly 15% will give me the right chart which i intend to draw there it is and the last option to do draw here is custom where i can select a particular pie a particular slice of a pie chart and tell it to go to primary plot or the secondary plot similar is the bar of pie chart if i select this one and change the chart type to bar of pie chart only that the secondary pie chart is now a bar chart and the contribution of each sub category is the height of this bar so it is like a stacked bar column and the height of each sub category is telling you the contribution of each sub category again remember that a, a pie chart should have data labels so we will select the data labels to be outside or best fit whichever you prefer if you want it to be percentages you can always select those and change the label options to percentage the last option in the pie charts is a donut chart a donut chart is similar to a pie chart but it has two differences one is that it has a hole in the middle and second is that it can display more than one series of data in this example i have two data series one for the year 2018 and the other for year 2019 and i want to plot the contribution of my products to the total sales in these two years how is the contribution changing for each product so instead of creating two different pie charts i have created a single donut chart you can see that the inner circle is giving me the contribution of products of 2018 year and the outer one is giving the contribution of 2019 year and from this pie you can see that contribution of shirts has increased for pants i'm not really sure because the baseline has moved so i'm not really sure whether it has increased or not probably if i add data labels i'll be able to compare same goes with the other categories so although this looks visually appealing it is very difficult to compare the contribution of products using a donut chart and instead of this a stacked column chart will be a much better choice so let us see how to draw this one we'll delete select the table go to insert and you can see that by default excel is telling you the column charts instead of this we are drawing a donut chart so this is a donut chart okay here's a donut chart you can add data labels again by clicking this plus sign so click on this you you have your data labels you can position them change the position of these data labels to make them more readable however since we already have a lot of categories this chart is going to be cluttered and there is no way this will look good in the formatting options you can change the width of these rings you can do that by right clicking any of these and opening opening the formatting options and then you can reduce the donut hole size to make these rings thicker you can also change these numbers to percentages by similarly going to the label options and changing values to percentages so although this type of chart should be used very sparingly 
we have covered the donut charts just so that you know how to draw one scatter plots are also known as xy charts and these are also a very common type of charts a scatter plot differs from most of the other chart types in that both axes display values in a scatter plot that is the horizontal axis is not a category axis in a scatter plot it is also having values this type of chart is often used to show the relationship between two variables in this example i have taken the monthly marketing emails that a company is sending and the corresponding sales it is obtaining so in the month of january 2018 the company sent out 904 marketing emails and the amount of sales that it did was 89 so the question that i want to answer is is there any relationship between marketing emails and sales to find that relationship i can plot a scatter plot of these two variables so on the x axis i can take marketing email and on the y axis i can take the sales value and each point will be x comma y so 904 comma 89 when you plot each individual point like this this whole plot is called a scatter plot and if you look at the scatter plot probably you can imagine that most of the points are telling you that there is a linear relationship between the x axis variable and the y axis variable that is if you increase the marketing emails amount the sales is correspondingly increasing so such relationships can be identified using scatter plots let us learn how to create this scatter plot i will delete this chart since scatter plot has two variables we will select these two variables that we want to plot and we will go to recommended charts option and we will select this scatter plot here i have this scatter plot it is looking a little bit different than the previous one the reason is that in the previous scatter plot i was showing you the y axis which was starting from a value of 75 here it is starting from 0 if your aim is to show the absolute values it is better to start from zero if your aim is to show the relationship between two variables you can start with a different value such as 75 how to change the value you select that y axis labels choose the formatting axis option and you change the bounds from zero to 75 so since i want to show that there is some linear relationship i have changed the lower bound of my y axis to 75 now it is like zooming in into that portion of the chart where most of my points are lying now what are the different types of scatter plots we will again go to change chart type and here you can see that we have created the first one which is a simple scatter plot the second one is a scatter plot with smooth lines the scatter plot with smooth lines can be used to show how the values are changing in the series so it will connect all the points in the series from the starting first point to the next point then to the next point using smooth lines that is if you look at any two points it is not joined by a straight line it is joined by a curved line so that it connects all the points the third option is scatter plot with smooth lines but no data markers as you can see the earlier one had these data points 
these small circles highlighting the data points if you do not want these small circles you can select the third option it will have smooth line but it will have no marker the point of this is if you want to emphasize on relationship only the fourth option is scatter plot with lines so as i told you the previous one had smooth lines that is it had curves instead of straight lines if you select this one it has straight lines connecting the two points next option is scatter plot with lines but no data markers same as before but the small circles will not be present if you select this one one additional feature that comes with scatter plots is trend line as i told you that scatter plot is used to identify relationship between two variables one method is to visually check out what trend is there between the two variables the other option is to draw a trend line trend line is another chart element so you can add it by clicking this plus symbol If you simply click trend line by default it will draw a linear trend line there are other options of trend lines also let us first draw a linear trend line when i select this trend line this linear trend line excel draws the line such that it minimizes the difference between each data point and the corresponding value on the trend line overall this trend line is suggesting that there is a positive relationship between sales and the marketing emails you can also see in this trend line if i increase the x axis value that is the marketing emails from nearly 780 to 880 that is there is 100 units increase i send additional 100 emails to the customers i will increase the sales by from 79 approximately to 88 approximately so by sending out 100 additional emails we will have an increased sale of 9 to 10 units so the slope of this line is telling you the change in the y axis with the change in x axis there are other types of trend lines also you can change from linear to logarithmic polynomial although we do not see any much difference in this data set but in your data set it is always better to draw all these types of trend lines first and then visually identify which is fitting the data better and use their trend line so using this trend line you can also forecast the sales such that if you know the number of emails you are going to send you can find out the corresponding sales value basis this trend line and once you have plotted this linear trend line and you want to find out what is the equation of this linear line that is considering this is y axis and this is x axis you want to find out y is equal to ax plus b and what is the value of a and b you can do that by taking this option this will give you the equation of this line here is the equation y is equal to 0.089 times x plus 8.8 so what this means is if you want to find out what will be your sales when you have when you are sending out 1000 emails you can just put the value of x as 1000 it will come out to 89.7 plus 8.8 so your total sales will be 
89.7 plus 8.8 .8, which will be nearly 98.5. So this is how this equation can be used. Basically the point of using a scatter plot is to find out the relationship between two variables. If you identify a relationship visually, you can also plot a trend line using this ch adding chart elements button. Once you plot a trend line and you are happy with the trend line and you would like to use the equation of that trend line. You can find that equation by clicking on this line, selecting its formatting options and ticking this box. If you are into data analytics and you understand the terms of R squared and, and intercept, you can add those options also. So the R squared value for this line is 0.48. So this is scatter plot. These last two options are remaining. This is a bubble plot and this is a 3D bubble plot. When we want to identify relationship between two variables only, we use these two dimensional scatter plots. But if you have a third dimension also, that is there is a third variable also and you want to see the relationship between first, second and the third variable you can use these 2D and 3D bubble plots. Let me show you how. In this data set, I have three data series. I had eight participants in my weight loss program. These are the original weights of these eight participants. This is the time spent by these participants in our program. And this is the amount of weight lost by each individual participant. I want to find out the effect of these two variables in determining this third variable. So what I'm going to do is I'll use a bubble chart which will have on the X axis, the original weight of each individual participant on the Y axis, it will have the number of weeks the participant was in program and the radius of this bubble will be this third variable. The idea behind creating this chart is if in this bubble chart circles with larger radius are coming in a particular area of this chart, you can assign that maximum weight loss is being achieved by people belonging to that particular category. For example, most of the weight loss has been achieved by people in this range. So people belonging to the weight category of 200 to 320 probably achieve the maximum weight loss. And at least you should be in the program for two or three weeks. So this square area constitutes most of the big circles and you can clearly identify the range in which these circles are occurring. So basically when you have three data series and you want to find the effect of two of the data series on the third data series, a bubble chart is used. So now let us learn how to draw a bubble chart. I'll delete this one. We will select these three series and go to the bubble chart. By default in Excel, the first series is taken as the radius of the bubbles and the other two series are taken as the X axis and Y axis. But instead what I want to do is I want to take the first variable as x axis, second as y axis and the third as the radius. So I have to go to select data option and I will change so the x value series is the original weight series 
the y value series is weeks in program and the bubble radius will be this one okay and it will automatically decide what should be the horizontal axis labels you can click on okay and this is the bubble chart that we wanted to create the second option in bubble chart is a 3d bubble chart as you can see this is a 2d bubble chart here you have circles if you create it in 3d these will become spheres so each circle is now looking like a small ball so just like scatter plots you can use bubble charts to identify trends and create trend lines once you have created the trend line you can format the trend line also you can change its color width etc so scatter plots and bubble charts are basically used to identify relationship between two or three variables and this is how we create them we will learn about frequency distributions and once we know about frequency distribution we will learn how to draw a histogram so when we are trying to draw a frequency distribution we are basically trying to summarize the data so that we have different categories from that data and we assign the number of occurrences of each category in that data for example if i have data of students of a college and against their name i have the branch that they belong to i can create a table like this in which i have summarized that how many of those students belong to each branch so in an engineering college in that list 100 students belong to computer science branch 80 students belong to mechanical engineering branch and so on when we have the categories like this that is the categories are discrete we have five different branches and to each branch we can clearly assign the students this is called qualitative data or categorical data and this type of distribution is called a frequency distribution for qualitative data so the raw data would be student name in front of that is written the branch to which that student belongs and we have this list for 420 students and we summarize that data as how many students belong to each group once we have assigned these frequencies we can also find out the relative frequency of each category by using this formula that is frequency of that category divided by sum of all frequencies that is if i want to find out the relative frequency of students belonging to biotechnology it is 60 that is the frequency of this category divided by the total frequency which is 420 is equal to nearly 14.2% so when we build a frequency distribution for qualitative data that is there are clear discrete categories and we draw a graph of it it is similar to a bar chart a graphical representation of frequency distribution for qualitative data is known as bar chart bar chart we have already discussed we know how to draw a bar chart if we have a data like this you can just select the data in excel and go to bar charts and draw this kind of graph the next type of frequency distribution is frequency distribution for quantitative data that is continuous data so for example if i have name of students and in front of them i have the marks of these students in science so marks is a continuous value from 0 to 100 if i want to straight away create categories maybe i'll get 100 categories one category of 0 one category of 2 one category of value 3 and that does not really make a sense so when we have a continuous data we try to create ranges small ranges and within each range we assign the frequency of number of instances belonging to that category so for example instead of creating 0 1 2 3 
as categories we have created 0 to 35 as one category 35 to 55 as another 55 to 70 as another and so on and within each range I have found out how many students belong to that range and I have assigned that number here so this table is frequency distribution for a continuous data and when we create a graph of this data that is called a histogram so a graph of frequency distribution of categorical variable is called bar chart a graph of frequency distribution of continuous data is called a histogram so how to draw a histogram when you have continuous data I have outlined that process in these six steps when you have a list of continuous data the first thing you need to decide is the number of classes that you want that is the number of categories for example in the previous example we have five classes so first thing you need to decide is how many classes you want in your table second using that number of classes we find out the class width using this formula the maximum value of data and the minimum value of data what is the difference between these two values divided by the number of classes that we decided in first step once we have class width we can start creating the classes we start by the minimum value we add class width and we get the first class this will get clear when we go through the example this is the continuous data that I have it's a set of 24 numbers and I want to segregate into 5 equal classes so I have selected the number of classes which is 5 now I want to find out the class width I told you class width is found by subtracting minimum value from the maximum value minimum value for this set of numbers is 6 and the maximum value is 36 so 36 minus 6 divided by number of classes which is 5 so it comes out to 6 now to create the classes I will start with the minimum value which is 6 and I will add the class width to get this upper range so it is 6 to 12 next class will start from this value 12 and we will add the class width to get 18 and so on so from 6 to 12 12 to 18 18 to 24 24 to 30 30 to 36 to avoid confusion that if we have a number 30 to which class it will belong we usually follow this convention that 30 will not belong to this class it will belong to this 24 to 30 class that is 30 will be part of the upper range and not of the lower range once we have created these classes we have to start assigning each number to these classes so I will go through the numbers one by one and I'll start adding a mark to each of the classes to whichever class that number belongs so for example I start with 10 10 belongs to this class so I add a mark here then there is 14 14 belongs to this class I add a mark here I go through all these numbers and I continue adding marks in the end I have this column containing tally which is giving me how many numbers belong to each category lastly I just need to add these marks to get the frequency so this is how this table is created and once this table is created we can create a histogram so let us go to excel now and create this histogram so here is the list of numbers that I had in my presentation and this is the histogram which is created for these numbers the good thing about excel is that you do not need to create that table to create this histogram excel can create this histogram straight away using these numbers you can see from 6 to 12 we have 2 from 12 to 18 we have 4 so basically the classes are on the horizontal axis and the height of the bar is giving you the frequency in each class one small but important thing to note here is 
that Excel is using these curved and square brackets to indicate that which number is included and which is not. For example, in this 24 to 30, 24 number will not be included in this graph. Therefore, it has a curved bracket, but 30 will be included in this bar. Therefore, it is a square bracket. So you can see for these four categories, the first number is not included, but the second is included. But for this first category only, the first and second both are included. This is how a histogram will look like. Let us learn how to create this histogram. I'll delete this first. So to create a histogram, select the numbers that we have. Go to insert. In these statistical graphs, this first option is a histogram. You can see by default, it has created three classes with the range 6 to 16, 16 to 26 and 26 to 36. Now I wanted five classes. So for that, I will do the format access. To open the format access, you know how to open this formatting options, either right click and select the format option or you double click on that chart element to open formatting options for that particular element. So I double clicked on the horizontal axis to open its formatting options. In these, the third option will have the specific axis options for histograms. Here you can change the bin width and number of bins. By default, automatically it created three bins. Now I want to create five bins. Now either I give a bin width of value six, which I found out. So this is the histogram that I wanted to see, or I could have given the number of bins as five. So both will work. Also remember whenever you draw a histogram, it is advisable that you have data labels on top of it. It will make it easier to find out what is the frequency of each category. The second type of statistical chart is a Pareto chart. So this is a Pareto chart. It is similar to the histogram. The major difference is the categories are shuffled. These are shuffled in this sense that the category which is contributing the most comes first. So this category had a frequency of nine. So it is coming first. Next comes the category which is contributing the next maximum to the total. So the categories are arranged in the descending order of their frequency values. And this line is showing the cumulative relative frequency values. For example, the relative frequency of this category is around 35%. When I add the second category, it becomes nearly 70%. After third category, it becomes nearly 88%. After adding fourth category, it becomes nearly 95%. And the last category adds it to 100%. So using Pareto, you can estimate how many of the categories contribute to how much percentage of the total. So for example, if you would like to find out those important two or three categories which are contributing 80% of the total, you can do that using a Pareto analysis. So this is how we create frequency distribution and histograms. Good thing about using Excel is you do not need to create a frequency distribution table to create a histogram. I told you how to do that so that you understand the concept behind a histogram. So that's all in this video tutorial. If you like this tutorial, we have complete courses on Udemy. If you are interested in any of our courses, just visit here. This link is also available in the description. And if you like any course, select that course and use code YouTube. This code will work on all the courses and will ensure that you get the course at the lowest prices. Thanks guys.